It's time for you all to wake up and shift your paradigm. This world is the kingdom of darkness and we are living in its last days. It won't be long before the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat and the earth and everything therein shall be burnt up. The Luciferian elite have been setting up the new world order and now they've established the globalist beast system for the rise of that wicked one and revealing of the man of sin who comes after the workings of Satan. Don't take my word for it. Read the Bible and you'll know that perilous times shall come in the last days. And we are in the last days. Today, we are going to be talking about the influence of Zoroastrianism on Jewish, Islamic, and Gnostic mysticism. Zoroastrianism is one of the world's oldest religions with its roots dating back to ancient Persia around 4,000 years ago. It was founded by the prophet Zoroaster. One of the major changes in Zoroastrianism occurred when the Persian Empire became the dominant power in the region. The religion became the official religion of the empire and underwent a period of growth and expansion. Zoroastrianism had a significant influence on many other religions, including Judaism, so called Christianity and Islam. The concept of single God, the belief in heaven and hell, and the idea of final judgment were all involved in Zoroastrianism. That was in the beginning. Despite its influence, Zoroastrianism has seen a definite decline in the re recent centuries today and there are only about 100,000 followers worldwide. However, its impact on world religions and unique beliefs continue to fascinate both scholars and its believers alike. Zoroastrianism has a rich history that spans thousands of years from its beginnings in ancient Persia to its influence on other religions. It has left an undeniable mark on human history. While its followers may be few in number today, the mark it's left definitely lives on. Part one of today's study is going to be on the influence that Zoroastrianism had on Jewish mysticism. Zoroastrianism was an ancient religion, as we said, and it originated in Persia. It heavily influenced mystical Judaism during the Babylonian exile. One of the Zoroastrian beliefs is a belief in good and evil, which can be seen in Jewish mysticism through the concept of the Yetzer Hara Yetzer Hatav. Another important aspect in Zoroastrianism was the belief in a single supreme deity, Ahura Mazda who was believed to be the source of all goodness and light. 
This idea influenced Jewish mysticism through the concept of Ein Sof that you've heard me talk about so many times. Ein Sof is the infinite and unknowable divine essence that is at the core of all existence in mystical Judaism. Zoroastrianism also had a strong emphasis on ethical behavior and personal responsibility, which can be seen in Jewish mysticism through the concept of the tikkun olam, as it is called, or repairing the world through acts of kindness or justice. But perhaps the most significant influence that Zoroastrianism had on Jewish mysticism was through its belief in angels and demons. You see, in Zoroastrianism, there were powerful spiritual beings known as Yazatas, who were believed to be intermediaries between humanity and the divine. This heavily influenced Jewish mysticism through the concept of angels which play a crucial role in Kabbalistic thought. Part two of today's study, because this is just a brief overview of what Saturday's episode of the Remnant Report is going to be Zoroastrianism's influence on Islamic mysticism. Now, Islamic mysticism, Muhammad, the ritual of the Kaaba are some profound aspects in Islam that were affected by Zoroastrianism. Today we are going to talk about the influence Zoroastrianism played on Islam, particularly Sufi mysticism. First off, it's important to note that Zoroastrianism was a major religion in Persia before the rise of Islam, so there were naturally some influences that carried over. One of the key influences was that of monotheism, but there are a lot more reasons why monotheism entered into Islam, and we will cover that in Saturday's episode. Now, Zoroastrianism was one of the first religions after the original religion and worship of the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to embrace the concept of one God. And this idea was one of the ideas that was adopted is, by Islam. Another influence another... adopted by Islam was that of the concept of angels and demons, just as we saw in mystical Judaism. Now, Zoroastrianism believed in good and evil spirits that were constantly battling for control of the world, and this idea was also incorporated into Islamic theology. Now, as for whether there was any influence on Muhammad specifically, some believe it's hard to say. I specifically say absolutely there was when Muhammad had his so-called visions the entire Arab world was polytheistic and by this time so was Zoroastrianism and we're going to get into all of that on Saturday's episode but for today's brief analysis, I just want to state that Muhammad may have been exposed to Zoroastrianism ideas during his travels as a merchant, but there's no definite concrete evidence to say one way or another. However, there is one aspect of Islamic practice that absolutely was influenced by Zoroastrianism, and that is the practice of walking around the Kaaba in Mecca. You see, in Zoroastrianism, it was common to walk around a fire as a form of worship, and some scholars, including myself, believe that this practice may have been adapted by early Muslims as a way to honor Allah. 
there you're going to see in Saturday's episode there are even Muslim scholars, modern Muslim scholars as well as ancient Muslim writers who say that walking around the cube in Mecca was a part of the Canaanite religion and it was something that existed many, many, many years before Muhammad's, and I'm adding this part in, so-called vision from the angel Gabriel. I'm not doubting that Muhammad had a vision. I am simply doubting who it was from. Now, that being said, you're going to see in the episode Saturday proof of the origin of the Kaaba and how it is linked to both and especially Sufi mysticism. Now, I do want to say lastly that Sufi mysticism is a branch of Islam. Now, not lastly, I, I said that a little wrong. I want to say lastly when it comes to Islam, that Sufism is a branch of Islam that emphasizes on spiritual experience and inner knowledge over strict adherence to the religious doctrine of Islam. And while Sufism developed independently from Zoroastrianism, there are some definite similarities between the two. For example, both religions emphasize the importance of so-called spiritual purity, but the truth is that spiritual purity only comes through following Jesus Christ, and that is not my opinion. That is something that can be proved beyond a shadow of a doubt using the scientific method, no less. But also the emphasis on self-discipline. And that is a brief overview of the influence that Zoroastrianism has played over Islam and Sufi mysticism over the years. Now, part three and the final aspect of today's short overview of Saturday's episode on the influence of Zoroastrianism on mysticism in general is going to be on the Zoroastrian origins of the quote-unquote Christian mysticism movement such as Gnosticism and also the New Age movement. Now Zoroastrianism, although an ancient Persian religion, played a significant role in shaping the beliefs, beliefs of the Gnostic sects, such as those that were created and eventually evolved in the early Christian era, the ones that were written about in the actual books of the New Testament, as well as were written about and written against in the Antinicene Fathers. I, I looked over to my right because I happen to have a dictionary of early Christian beliefs that is just full of writings from the Antinicene Fathers against Gnosticism. And they actually talk about the pagan origins of Gnosticism. But as I was saying, Zoroastrianism, although it was an ancient Persian religion, it played a significant role in forming the beliefs of the groups of Gnostics in the early Christian era. Now, the same dualistic nature of the Luciferian religion was originated in the mystery religions like that of Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism emphasized the struggle between good and evil, and it did this along with the mystical Merkabah mysticism in Judaism. And both of these, both Zoroastrianism and, as we've already heavily influenced, Jewish mysticism, well, both Zoroastrianism and Jewish mysticism 
heavily influenced Gnosticism. Now, the Gnostic belief in a divine spark that is trapped in the material world, which is controlled by evil forces, comes directly from Zoroastrianism and Merkabah mysticism, which is known today as Kabbalah. Now, one of the most notable of these groups of Gnostics influenced by Zoroastrianism was the Manichaeans founded by the so-called prophet Mani in the 3rd century CE or AD. And it was Mani's teachings that combined elements of Christianity, Buddhism, and Zoroastrianism to create a complex com cosmology that emphasized the struggle between light and darkness. And this is the sect of Gnosticism that Augustine became a part of, and it was followers of Augustine like Martin Luther and John Calvin who first introduced mysticism into Protestant Christian thought. Now, I use the two names of Martin Luther and John Calvin simply because they are the two names that people will recognize the most when it comes to the Protestant Reformation. Now, because of men like Augustine and his mysticism, the Gnostic belief system had firmly taken root within the Roman Catholic Church centuries before the Protestant Reformation. So this is not something that can by any means be laid at the feet of Augustine or Luther or Calvin because as we've seen, you know, Augustine got it from the Manichaeans and the Manichaeans were one of many of the groups of Gnostics in the early centuries after Christ. Now, Zoroastrianism also influenced the development of the modern form of New Age spirituality, particularly through the work of women like Helena Blavatsky and her Theosophical Society. Blavatsky's writings drew heavily on Eastern religions, including Zoroastrianism, to create a synchronistic spiritual system that emphasized on dualism. It literally used the dualism of Zoroastrianism to create the Luciferian religion that we see today that is used and followed and worshipped by so many of the elite of the leaders of the world. Now, in conclusion for today's short overview on Zoroastrianism, I just want to say that both Zoroaster himself and Zoroastrianism played a significant role in shaping both ancient Gnosticism and modern New Age spirituality. Its dualistic worldview and emphasis on spiritual evolution continue to influence misguided spiritual seekers who choose to reject the only source of truth that is found in Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Now, brothers and sisters, I truly hope you've enjoyed this brief video, and I hope with all my heart that you will join us